River City Podcast Federation. Welcome back to Laughing in the Dark, the podcast where I hang out in haunted places with comedians. I'm your host, Sarah Jones. In this episode, I got to hang out with a very funny comic named James Barella. James Barella's comedy explores social situations with goofy voices, working class perspectives, and cautionary tales. His comedy sometimes veers into unusual sexuality, sometimes veers Mexican, and occasionally it veers into a psychedelic vortex. The son of a palm reader and a sheet metal worker in Oklahoma, Barella lived in New York City for several years before becoming a Portland comedy stalwart. Delivered with the likability of a teddy bear who's seen some shit, James Barella's comedy welcomes you into his unique and tangy perspective. James Barella has performed at Mutiny Radio Comedy Festival in San Francisco and hosts and produces a bomb-ass weekly showcase called Sincerity is Gross every weekend at the Slide Inn in Portland, Oregon. Barella and I hung out at Old Town Pizza in Portland, Oregon, a historic and haunted building in Chinatown housing a rustic pizzeria. Framed in the heart of Portland, Old Town emulates the spirit of the region with every beer they brew and pizza they make. They also share their space with a spirit named Nina. Here's the episode. I hope you have fun. Okay. All right. Well, so let's start out by talking about where we are. We're at Old Town Pizza Mm -hmm. in... Uh, Chinatown in yeah. Portland <laughs> and we are sitting in a back booth area how would you describe where we're sitting um, it's high ceilings and uh, it's got a different ceiling than the rest of the place uh, yeah it's like two floors up in a, in a time when floors weren't that big I guess it mm. also looks like it's the outside it's a, a different building like a separate because there's like yeah, this looks like windows in front of the brick over here that aren't windows anymore. Like up on top, like you can see. So it's like, I don't know, a separate, almost like a separate building, but also halfway through it changes to something else. I don't you're know. close. I'll let you know what it is when we get to it. Okay. But um, yeah, you're very close. So it's uh, dimly lit. Or maybe it used to be an alleyway, because I see a window there and a window there. It's almost uh-huh. like we're between buildings, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dimly lit, brick backdrop, big, beautiful, old window Yeah. that leads out to a creepy-ass alley. Yeah, they lit it really creepy, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a hanging stained glass window. There's a thumping behind me on the wall. <laughs> That's the ghost. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're in the very back of Old Town Pizza. You can find a little sitting area. That's where we're sitting. Yeah. Um, a lot of graffiti. A lot of graffiti. It's Somebody I named Chud. <laughs> oh, you know Isn't Chud uh, from a movie? Yeah, it's a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, cannibalistic, like, cannibalistic humanoid underground Underground dwellers. dwellers uh-huh. And then there was the sequel, Bud the Chud, about a kid who befriends one of the... <laughs> I did not know cannibal, about Bud the Chud. One of the, the sewer Chud. cannibals, yeah. Names him Bud. <laughs> okay, so Chuds are here. Um, I see, like, multiple red rums all over the brick. Does it say funeral coach? There's one up there. Hmm. When you want your funeral to be on its A game. Yeah, exactly. If you need uh, help working on some tears. (laughs) This was one hell of a funeral. Who was your funeral coach? I've been training for a while. (laughs) (laughs) Did a big fat woman jump on the casket and cry? It was great. It was just very theatrical. (laughs) Everyone had a good time. (laughs) All right, good deal. So, before we get started, I'm going to go through my sources for this episode. Ooh. Yeah, very official. <laughs> uh, I use otbrewing.com. 
which is the Ooh. website for Old Town. Um, the Old Town Pizza, the yeah, location yeah. we're in. PDXeater.com. Ooh. A blog called Sluggo's Ghost Stories. <laughs> Uh, it can be found at sluggosghoststories.blogspot.com, Coin Six News, oh. hauntedhouses.com, hauntedplaces.org, <laughs> <laughs> draftmag.com, oregonlive.com, okay. and Wikipedia. Nice. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are at Old Town Pizza in Northwest Portland, Oregon. It's a notoriously haunted spot and also a very popular pizza joint in Portland. It's located at 226 Northwest Davis Street. If you live here or you're visiting Portland, Old Town Pizza is a spot you definitely can't miss. <laughs> it's like everyone knows about this place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so back in 1880, the Merchant Hotel was built in this spot. Where we're sitting at Old Town Pizza is actually where the original hotel lobby once stood. Ooh. The window where your pizza order can be placed today, when you, right when you walk in the door, that yeah. window. Yeah. Um, it's actually the original Merchant Hotel reception desk. Okay. Complete with the hotel lobby's original decorative cast iron beam posts. So we'll take a look at that when we leave. Yeah, nice. Old Town Pizza is situated just above Portland's Shanghai Tunnels, which were used to keep kidnapped sailors in the early 1900s. <laughs> These tunnels connect Portland in an underground pathway. If you look on the floor of Old Town Pizza, you should be able to see now sealed off trap doors that <laughs> once took unsuspecting sailors down below to the tunnels. I didn't even look for that. We'll have to look as we're walking out. <laughs> So this area of Portland was once known as the Old North End, and it has a bit of a dicey past. Do you know about this? Uh, a little bit. Okay, yeah. So Old Town was generally known to be an area rife with prostitution, gambling, and opium dens. Yeah, that was like the 2000s, I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard or about that right 1800s. before I moved here. Yeah, it was like right before I moved here, I heard about that. Yeah, it's still kind of going, no. <laughs> um, not to mention the sinister labyrinth known as the Shanghai Tunnels running underneath. Although the Merchant Hotel catered to a rather upscale crowd, it was known to be a place to offer prostitution as well. The building was home at various times to a bar, a brothel, a billiards hall, <laughs> and at one point, a cracker factory, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Probably the most sinister of them yeah. all. Um, some would say all of Portland is a cracker factory. <laughs> That's pretty true, yeah. Uh, the Acquardi family founded Old Town Pizza in 1974. This is how the lobby of the Merchant Hotel was transformed into the popular pizza joint it is today. Ooh. Now a Portland landmark. This restaurant was once a hangout for the leaders of the 1970s counterculture Actor William Defoe regularly could be found hanging out on the couch on the mezzanine. What? That's up right up there on those half stairs. Ugly motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Just stinking up the joint with his face. <laughs> I love William Defoe. <laughs> I know, but yes. Uh, I saw an old movie with him in it. Uh, and he was like, he, even when he was young, he was freaky looking. Wait, am I saying his name wrong? Is it Willem? It's Willem. It's Willem, yeah. 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 I even wrote William. Ooh. What am I even talking about? I'm like, no, not Willem. William. Oh, <laughs> William. Oh, okay. William. Oh, he's oh, handsome. Totally. Yeah, he's, he's a really good looking striking. guy. Mm. <laughs> um, also, Bill Walton, a Portland Trailblazer superstar. Ooh was known to regularly ride his bike here and order a vegetarian pizza and a pitcher of Henry's, or as he called it, his usual. Vegetarian, but a whole pitcher of beer to himself. Just yeah. e even in up the scales right there. Yeah, Gonna be literally. healthy, <laughs> but very healthy. then kill my liver. <laughs> <laughs> colon, happy colon, shitty liver, that's my... <laughs> yes, perfect. I thought you said kill my lover, and I was like, wait, what? What yes. happened? <laughs> Often bringing his teammates along with him, Walton said to have uh, closed the place down more than once. Oh. Eventually, Old Town Pizza expanded out to locations in Salem, Eugene, and even San Francisco, wow. 
but the original location in Portland is the survivor of the bunch where we are today. Oh. There's also an old town brewing at another yeah, location. Yeah, by the north. Yeah, by the Curious Comedy Theater. Mm -hmm. yeah, same building. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, the restaurant is owned by a new family, the Milne family, who strives to keep the legacy alive in the little piece of Portland history here. Ooh. Today, Old Town Pizza has award-winning beers, earning medals at multiple Great American Beer Festival judging mm -hmm. competitions. Their Shanghai IPA earned a gold medal in this year's World Beer Cup, while their Sunday's Kolsch won a silver medal twice in 2014 and in 2015, and won bronze at this year's Oregon Beer Awards. Ooh. So I actually got the Shanghai IPA. It's yeah. really good. And I got a piece of their pizza too because they have two dollar slices for yes. happy hour. Oh yes. So you have you can't come to Old Town there Pizza. There used to be, a, used to be an open mic right around the corner, uh, and I used to come here all the time and grab a slice while oh I was waiting God. to go up. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. They're rest in peace, boiler room. <laughs> So they said they were going to uh, put a Starbucks there, but so far it's still empty. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it haunted? Uh, probably, but <laughs> it was the longest running open mic in Portland. And oh, wow. Going for like oh, 10 yeah, years or 12 years. Boiler that. room, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they shut it down. Oh, shut what a bam. bummer. And supposedly something else was going to go there, but so far it's still fucking empty. Like everything else in this fucking city. Yeah. So it's like they shut it down for no reason. Yeah, pretty much. What a bummer. Some people with money don't give a fuck. Yeah. It's like, I want that property someday. They're probably just trying to flip it. Yeah. Trying to wait for another offer to come along so they can sell it. It's probably what's going on. Yeah, that would make sense. How long ago did it? Probably like two years. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's a long time to be sitting on mm -hmm. real estate. I don't think there's anything there yet. So, do you want to know about the ghost here? Only one? Okay. Yeah. Let's hear about it. It's a no. good one. Oh, actually, there might be two. Okay. Okay, so, the presence that's regularly encountered at Old Town Pizza is Nina, Ooh. an entity they consider to be their resident ghost. Okay. <laughs> um, Nina has been seen wearing a black dress, either watching guests or wandering around the basement. When she's not seen, Nina's presence can sometimes be felt. Mm. Some may smell her perfume as she glides past them. Nina's presence has been felt here for over a hundred years. Damn. Yep. Legend has it that Nina was among one of the working women at the Merchant Hotel. Mm -hmm. Sold into the lifestyle by slavery. Does it not Nina? How do you spell that name? It's N-I-N-A, but it's pronounced Nina, not, not Nina. Nina. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Continue. Nina was convinced by traveling missionaries to give up information in order to free her from this lifestyle. She obliged and sadly was found dead in this hotel shortly after. Wow. Her body had been thrown down the elevator shaft. Are we in an elevator shaft right now? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this used to be. Mm hmm. Cool. I read that Nina's picture can be found hanging on the wall. In here? Yeah, well, not in here, unless that's a painting of her. But. Well, that's pretty creepy. That could be. It looks kind of like uh, well, a Hamlet's sister, but just a close up of the face, the one where she's <laughs> floating down the oh, yeah. stream or something like that. Yeah, maybe that's supposed to be her. It would make sense, wouldn't it, if they put it in this back room? Yeah, yeah if the picture's supposed to be in this shaft. Well, it's supposed to be hanging up somewhere. I just read that. I don't know uh, if that's true or where it is, but maybe mm. that's what they're referring to. Uh, it's a really pretty like, picture. Yeah, it's really creepy. Mm -hmm. Blackened eyes and like, it's like <laughs> a face, the, the head embedded in something or something. Yeah, and Does that look like someone who's been thrown down an elevator shaft here? Yeah, and whose head Kinda came does. off. <laughs> it looks like yeah. It's a, it's, it looks pretty headless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Nice pretty. and creepy. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some believe Nina was murdered because she'd given away information to the missionaries meant to bring down the brothel. Still, mm. other theories abound as to why Nina was killed. Some say she was killed by a jealous lover. Oh. Others think she was killed by a pimp after she had expressed a wish to leave her unwanted life of prostitution. Hmm. Some simply believe Nina had heard some information she wasn't meant to hear. Ooh. Whatever the reason, it was believed that Nina was murdered. 
However, a proper investigation was never carried out to bring Nina to justice. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> this, considering the time, is not shocking. Yeah, yeah. In the late 19th century, Portland was virtually lawless, especially the more seedy area, yeah. whereas now it's illegal to use straws. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Coke. Well, I mean, that's a different, that's a need, not a want. <laughs> um, there is a booth in the rear of the restaurant that okay. we're sitting in. Yeah. Nina was said to have carved her name in the brick of the old elevator shaft. What? You mean like post, as a ghost? Or as <laughs> she was dying? I, was, I don't know, and I was wondering that too. I was thinking, when I first read it, I was thinking while she was dying. But then... But that doesn't make sense. Well, like if you're sitting there, but then maybe yeah. as a ghost, she's like, I'm here. Where? But... Yeah, I, it's I not keep... well lit enough. Uh-huh. And even so, how would you Wait. prove it? I mean, I see some, I see some ends over here. I know that's. I've been looking for it the whole like time. Right there on those two bricks. But doesn't? Oh wait, that looks like it says N A V, N Y E. This says Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear the story of Brett. <laughs> like, oh look, someone wrote Nina right here. Oh uh, yeah. And that's the thing is like someone could have just come in yeah, and carved that's white, it. That's like whiteout. I don't think they had whiteout. Do ghosts? Oh use no, the ghosts usually use whiteout. <laughs> whiteout. They make a lot of clerical chicken. errors. Thick yes. brand. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, wait. Oh no, this one just says Jamie. <laughs> Looks like everyone just. This says Thundercock. Thundercock. That's exciting. One of the clients that made her want to kill herself, probably. <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't see it, Maybe. but I keep reading that you're supposed to see it somewhere, but I'm sure, I mean. Well, I mean, light it up with a flashlight or something. Yeah. Phone light. But I'm not entirely convinced someone couldn't just carve in. I bet yeah, you there's like course. seven of them somewhere, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. Um. Oh, I said, I wonder if the carving oh, is I still there. Oh, I see a carved nine right there. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Where? Right oh. on this side. I'll probably bring my mic with me. <laughs> yeah. so. One moment, please. Test, test. Okay, we're good. It's right below where it says HPV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And that even looks older. Yeah. All right, so... Get back into the story. Let's go to your episode two. Who's in the episode? And that's the thing. It's like if it did just show up there, <laughs> or if it was always there. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> As mentioned, Nina's sweet perfume can sometimes be detected when people mm. come here to visit. Mm. This creeps me out. Okay. When they turn to look behind them, Nina can sometimes be seen in a black dress, yeah. only briefly, yeah. looking over their shoulder before she disappears. So it's like they'll smell perfume, look behind them, see her, and then she'll like be gone. Like it's like when you yeah. see something really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't that creep you out? <laughs> that creeps me out. Voices can sometimes be heard here, especially in the basement. Okay. Others have attested to seeing objects move on their own. Mm. There is stained glass hanging in the spot where the elevator shaft once stood. Yes. We're looking at it right now. Uh -huh. Some have seen it sway when there is no breeze. And from where that is, there wouldn't be a breeze. I don't think this window even opens. Yeah. Does it? Maybe it does. But they'll see that moving like someone tapped it but nobody's back here. Ooh. It looks like really old too. Like you can mm -hmm. see how it's kind of warped. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful too. It is warped. Does yeah. like weather do that or something? I don't know, maybe it's just old. It's mm -hmm. like the metal is starting to give way to the weight or something. Oh, the metal in the stained glass, yeah. yeah. Maybe, I have no idea. <laughs> Wouldn't it be crazy if that just started swinging right now while we were talking yeah. about it? Or, or fell on me and cut me in half as we were walking out of here. <laughs> cut 
what you would <laughs> <laughs> It's glass. I've seen the omen. <laughs> um, some employees say that they have felt tapping on their shoulder. I read this multiple times. People feeling tapping when yeah. nobody was there. Yeah. Many feel some kind of residual lurking energy around them here. Whoa. Some have mentioned the classic feelings of cold spots accompanied by what is described as pins and needles. Okay. Whispers in their ear, and even a tapping on a picture frame that repeats when they address it. So that's like one specific instance Whoa. I read where there's a picture frame. I don't know which one it was. There's a lot of pictures hanging up. Yeah. Could be the one behind you yeah. where they heard like a tapping on the frame. Yeah. And then it said that they addressed it. So they must have been like, like is someone there? And then it happened again. <laughs> so it's like it called back to them. Um, a couple of bartenders reported the feeling of a hand slowly pulling their hand away from taps while they were pouring. Uh. <laughs> One server reported being chased up the stairs by a ghost on his first day. What? <laughs> Which sucks. How <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Just coming up from the basement and being chased up by a ghost. Um, the owner claims to have seen a woman in a white dress, mm -hmm. contrasting, quite literally, yeah. the usual sighting of a woman in black. Don't believe that one. <laughs> this is the owner trying and to that be cool. was a lie. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, he the says owner that trying he... to be like, I'm one of you guys. What was she wearing? <laughs> white dress, of course. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, right. You didn't see Nina. You don't know Nina <laughs> like I know Nina. Uh, but you call her Nina. <laughs> yeah. I saw Nina, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says that he saw her walking downstairs while they were closing up um, and when he went down to tell her that they were closed nobody was down there right. cool. <laughs> uh, the Portland walking tours come through here um, and like to leave out a bowl full of Scrabble pieces in the basement oh they say sometimes Nina rearranges the letters to spell out messages for them like what I don't know damn Nina was here. <laughs> what would you leave if Peace you were out. a ghost? <laughs> I don't know. Sups. <laughs> Word. Word. Um, I read a couple comments online that people left of their own experience of Nina. Whoa. One anonymous poster, this is kind of interesting because it didn't occur in here. Okay. She shared that, or she or he, I don't know. Yeah. They. They shared that they had been reading about the story of Nina sitting at their desk. What? The commenter claims that there was a tape dispenser sitting next to their phone. Okay. And while they were reading Nina's story, the tape dispenser inexplicably moved two inches to the right. Could have been Nina, could have been another ghost being like, hey, yeah. I'm yeah. here. I'm like, why are you reading about another ghost? I'm right here. Are you trying right to get some here. strange? <laughs> <laughs> um, Another commenter named Jake claims to have taken photos of the booth and seating area that sits where the elevator shaft once was, where uh -huh. we're sitting. Uh -huh. When he reviewed the photos, he realized he had captured Nina's reflection in a mirror, oh, that shit. one, um, and contends that she was in fact wearing a black dress. So you know it's true. <laughs> um, I wish he would have posted this photo because I would have loved to see it. Yeah. But I would imagine it had to be that mirror right there. And I took a picture of it. I'll look at it later. And make you take sure a picture of the mirror. Mm. Wouldn't that be crazy to take a picture and then there's like a face like in the mirror when you look at it on your phone? It's my face. <laughs> She's just like looking you off in the mirror. Yeah. Wow. Super creepy. I keep expecting to see her up there. It's up like, where? I keep looking up on the second rail up there, on that second floor. Oh yeah. But I don't know. Walking down the stairs. No, just like up there somewhere. I think it'd be creepy if you turned and looked in the mirror and you saw her in the mirror. Yeah, that's Instead what I'm doing. of your reflection. <laughs> Wouldn't that be scary? I don't know. Anybody's reflection would be better in my face. <laughs> You're like, damn, I'm looking all right today. What's Ooh, up, look, me? Look my cheekbones oh, that come could from. be Nina. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, other people have reported catching shadows and mists in photos that they cannot explain. Okay. Yeah. Um, when employees close up for the night or open in the early morning, it's not uncommon to see Nina floating and moving throughout the restaurant. 
What? Yeah. She also has been known to move chairs and items on the tables and in the kitchen. If someone is still quiet and alone here, uh -huh. they can often hear Nina's footsteps tapping across the floor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One employee claims to have heard these footsteps in the kitchen after closing. When he looked up, he saw Nina in a black dress walking towards him. Jesus. When she seemed to notice him looking at her, yeah. she stopped, stared back at him, then turned around and walked down the stairs to the basement toward the tunnels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nina may not be the only ghost here, what I was okay. saying earlier. Okay. Um, I've read a few reports, and literally only like two or three that mentioned this, mm -hmm. of people seeing and sensing a sinister male presence here. Yeah. The Ghost Adventures team came here to investigate with a spirit box. Do you know what that is? Spirit box? No. Yeah, it's like, it's supposed to be a little box where you can like catch EVP recordings of okay. like ghosts talking to you. All right. Um, so they brought a spirit box and they claim to have caught a male voice saying, let's get naked. <laughs> so I got, <laughs> I got mixed reports on that because I read... Yeah, yeah. that was no one we just caught it no i read reports that nina had said it and i was like oh she has a sense of humor and oh, then i was yeah. like i actually read what the ghost adventures guy said yeah. and he said that he caught a male voice Ooh. so that i would imagine is like a pimp or something there's a lady in a black dress right there really where's the bathroom uh no idea do you know i'm oh, sorry <laughs> 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 oh my god okay first of all i'm the most gullible person in the world yeah. so when you said there's a lady in a black dress i was like really and then i was like i'm so gullible and then a lady in a black dress <laughs> yeah. literally just walked up to us and asked us where the bathroom is nobody else saw her there's i didn't no realize it was black tie-dye <laughs> yeah, tie i was really with the times <laughs> <laughs> it was black and white. <laughs> yeah. it was, uh, no, that was just the, the the mist around her, the fog. <laughs> yeah. It's like the blue black dress yes. thing. Some people the, see white, some people see black. The, the, the We're all right. The nimbus <laughs> in wreathing her oh black my God, dress. That was so funny. Because like where I'm sitting, it was blocking her walking. Yeah. So I thought you were fucking with me, and then it actually was a woman in a black dress yeah. walking towards us. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Nina looks like, I don't know, kind of, kind of cool. Like a, yeah, like a, you know, like a new mom, kind of like <laughs> the mom from Family Times a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We saw a woman in a black dress. There we go. Yeah. Verified. Podcast over. <laughs> <laughs> Season finale. <laughs> we did it. So that's my story. Cool. Um. I will say, I knew the history of where we were sitting. Yeah. Right when I sat here, I did feel like a different feeling here. Okay. That could just be me. That could be the fact that I know a body was right where we're sitting right mm. now. Was it like right on this level, you think? Or you think it was lower? It was you right here. Well, because this would be the this floor the of the elevator shaft. So she got thrown down and her body was found like right where our table is. How high from how high? I don't know. And I don't know if the fall killed her, and they don't know either because they didn't do an investigation. Yeah, she could have just been murdered first, throat cut or something, and then tossed like uh, yesterday's, you know, poor rubbish mm -hmm. down the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> the now old, we have more rubbish horseshoe. bins. <laughs> but then they just throw them down fucking elevator shafts and they didn't yeah. even care. <laughs> they didn't try to recycle or nothing. Lawless like. Portland. <laughs> I think you compost horror rubbish. <laughs> but Ooh, so you wrote red hairs. rum up there backwards. I know. I saw a bunch of those. I saw that one, oh, yeah. and then there's one right there. Oh, another one. <laughs> so um, before we started this episode, yeah. you were talking about how your mom yeah. was a palm reader. Yes. You said you had a story about that. Uh, I got s several stories about that. Yeah. Um, Not, I mean, this is a horrible segue, but I'm yeah. just saying. <laughs> Definitely piqued your interest. Mm -hmm. 
you were telling stories, and I had other. I'll save the. I'll save the. The, the grand the grand finale for last okay. I guess uh, one of the ones you were talking about like talking to to uh, dead dead dads I guess so my mom okay my mom was a, was a palm reader uh, my pretty much my entire childhood uh, she like hurt her back at uh, Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City and mm-hmm. so she got put on disability so she never really had like a real job she just collected like a disability check mm-hmm. and uh, she had been psychic since she was a kid. Uh, seeing things and knowing things and healing seeing people like and stuff. what um I, 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 that I, I, she has a, she had a story about playing in like a sandbox as a as a kid and like seeing like a ghost or something like that I don't remember though mm-hmm. but she, I remember her saying since she was a little kid that she's mm-hmm. been able to like see things and stuff but I will say okay so she Read people's palms pretty much my entire life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, she, like I was telling you, uh, first she was doing it by donation. And then she decided to try and charge like a $20 minimum. And she started having bad luck. So she went back to just by donation. So like she wasn't trying to scam people. They could pay whatever they had. If they had a mm-hmm. dollar, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so like my entire childhood, well, first of all, like, you know, she would have clients come over. And so I'd be, I'd have to be semi quiet mm-hmm. as I was playing in the living room or whatever while she was back there reading palms or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, uh, grew up with like weekly, like I don't know what you would say, like a group would come over and they would do like sci- uh, psychic experiments and things the like seance? that. They, they were seances. There were people. They had a special. A guy came in once and channeled the spirit and talked to them and answered questions. And, uh, like, here, here's, here's something funny. I'm, like, a skeptical... Like, it's been around since I was a little kid. Like, right. since I've been, like, six. But when I was starting to become a teenager and a shithead, mm-hmm. like, 13, 14, I was in there and uh, witnessing this guy laying on his stomach and talking through his hand like a puppet. And people were asking him questions. And he had, like, a weird Kermit the Frog voice uh, as he channeled his spirit. <laughs> Kermit the Frog voice? Yeah. It, like, he made, like, a Kermit, like... Ugh. <laughs> I think I feel you know so whatever I don't know if he was scammed but at one point and I was sitting there going like what the fuck is this and, mm-hmm. and he's like down on, on the floor and then like the the hand turned towards me and was like somebody here doesn't think this is real or something like that yeah <laughs> so that was I was like oh my god it's real <laughs> was his, were his eyes shut like he couldn't yeah, see yeah, you yeah 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 he was like uh, he was actually under hypnosis actually one oh. of the guys that would come over on a regular basis uh, his name was I don't remember his first name. His last name was Johnson, mm. and he was a doctor of some sort. I don't know what he was a doctor in, mm. uh, but he was a professional hip- hypnotist, he hip- hypnotherapist, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just called him Doctor J. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, I'd seen him hypnotize a few people uh, growing up, and so he hypnotized him, and they brought forth the spirit and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so wait. They would just hypnotize random people. No, no, for like, for like a thing, I, I, for like, for for a goal. So like, no, I know, but like, yeah. could anyone channel a spirit with the hypnosis? Oh no, no, this, this guy had like a spirit that he channeled inside. Okay, already, yeah, he had already been in contact with and all that stuff like that. So it was like I a, see. it was like a, a way to give know, the spirit a, a voice. Yeah, it was like a special. No, no, no. Like he, like he channeled the spirit like a lot. <laughs> it was his thing. He was the only yeah. person I ever met that like channeled the spirit to talk like that. Um, Weird. But he was like, so he was like a special guest or like a guy that was passing through town and you knew him and like, hey, you want to talk to the spirit and ask him questions? So like they were asking him like, uh, like his daughter was there like, oh, should I pursue modeling career and stuff like that? You mm-hmm. know, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot, uh, they sang Kumbaya. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> they would like... A circle, hold hands, and just uh, yeah, it's really vague because I was really little, but it was like, yeah, much of my childhood on the weekends was like watching this 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 group of like oh okay so the other thing they would do is they would like uh, say okay or you know it'd be like on the weekend or whatever and they'd be like okay so Wednesday I'm going to send you a shape Wednesday at five and so you just be ready to receive it and so like they'd be at home trying to receive and somebody else would be at home trying to transmit a triangle and mm-hmm. like they would like do that 
It would, ha- it would happen. Or yeah. one time my mom was trying to receive and like heard uh, like clatter and dishes and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. the guy was like, oh, yeah, no, I was actually out. I wasn't trying to send you anything. That kind of stuff. Huh. Uh, this is all stuff that, by the way, that I kind of compartmentalize in my yeah. in my brain. I don't yeah. really think about it. I'm not a fucking uh, hippie or like <laughs> somebody who participates in this kind of shit. And most people mm-hmm. that want to tell me about it, I think, are fucking, uh, you know, fucking full of shit, and their minds ate up from fucking meth and acid or whatever. Right, it's right. Like, I'm not, really, mm-hmm. I'm not into it. But mm-hmm. uh, I have an extensive background yeah. <laughs> and experience. Yeah, with yeah. It. Uh, but I, I digress. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she palm read and uh, and uh, so there was a time where we were living out in Little Axe, Oklahoma out on some fucking land in a trailer and I would only visit her like uh, on the weekends I was living with my dad mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, so clients would come would drive way the fuck out in the country uh, to uh, get their fortune told or whatever uh-huh. or, or healed she did that as well yeah um, so this one girl is having her fortune, or not her fortune told, I guess, you know, having her palm read. Yeah. Which is really, uh, it's not like my mom looks at your palm and goes, oh, this and that. It's really more of like she's holding your hand and like looking to your eyes and just trying to receive things, okay, you know. Okay, so she's not looking at like your love line and your... That's some that of it. Stuff. Like, yeah. it's like that, that's like, that's like the, there's a little bit of that. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, she can look and say, like, oh, you're going to have some trouble and, like, you're, when you're middle-aged and she can see that in your palm. But also, she's just trying to receive just anything just by, yeah. like, touching your hand and, like, and closing her eyes or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, uh, she's holding the, the girl's hand. She told me this. She got freaked out and your told mom me this. Did? Yeah, told me this yeah. later, uh, like, after the, the, the girl left. Uh, so And, like... So she's the, the girl is talking to her about something, asking her about a completely unrelated subject, looking for advice. Yeah. And like, uh, my mom is like looking past her shoulder in her room and sees an old man there, uh, waving his arm around crazy, like going like, ah, ah look at my arm, yeah, ha, ha, ah, ha, ah, like this. Yeah. And my mom's like, okay, I'm seeing like a frail old man behind <laughs> you who's waving. <laughs> his right arm really crazily yeah and uh and the chick got freaked out because her dad had died like the year before and he had had crippling uh uh, arthritis and his arm had been locked up up to like his chest oh wow yeah so So he's showing her look i'm i can move my arm i'm doing great exactly that's awesome and uh and like you know they cried and all these things and then like and like i said and and then she left and then my mom came out and told me what happened and it's just yeah yeah yeah. that's my experience wow Uh, but uh i guess i mean if i really sat here and thought i could probably think it's more because they were just all over my childhood but this is the one that i usually tell people okay because this one uh is uh a testament to my mom's psychic abilities uh in government print (laughs) oh yeah okay so first of all i should say my mom was a manic depressive and like uh we did not get along i'll just say that Mm -hmm. and um uh and fucked up childhood all that shit and then Mm -hmm. like i in my 20s i like separated myself from her for like years yeah and then uh finally decided all right well i guess i should uh, go meet my mom again or whatever yeah and so when i went back i was kind of like hanging out she had like this new condo she was living in and shit like that and and i'm in i'm in her bedroom and like i look on the wall and she has her certificate on her wall from the police department of noble oklahoma and i was just like why you have a certificate from the police department on your wall yeah and she was like oh uh, I helped them find a body. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and, what? And so apparently, so like in a noble Oklahoma and a missing persons case and the sheriff was at his wits end and uh, she had a friend that lived in noble who knew the sheriff and was like, go talk to Anne. And uh, the sheriff came, talked to her and like she basically did a reading for the sheriff and uh, started described like a place 
which was like an entrance to some property that had uh-huh. like these specific kind of trestles and shit like that uh-huh. out in noble bumfuck nowhere oklahoma and the sheriff was like i know that place and she described it and he was like i know where that is and he went there and he found a dead girl in a ditch oh, holy shit yeah and closed the thing the is case. like okay two things and gave her a certificate of thank you from the police department yeah for using her psychic powers that is nuts yeah the first thing is i always hear i feel like when i was last home i'm from michigan yeah i was last home one of my friends erica actually she listens to the show hey erica (laughs) um she told me this story of a psychic that she knows yeah that has says that she's received details about an unsolved murder yeah and she keeps trying to reach out and be like hey you need to check this spot you need to check yeah. the spot and they're just blowing blowing her off yeah yeah it's like why why wouldn't you just take any lead you have yeah, ever, yeah. no matter what but the other side of that that i think about is like if i was a psychic yeah. if i was your mom in that scenario yeah and I did the reading, and then I described where a body was. Yeah. I would be worried that I would be implicated. You know, oh. that, <laughs> oh, how did you know where the body yeah. was? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I would worry, yeah. I'd be worried that somehow they would think, like, oh, you're pretending to be a psychic, but you actually either know <laughs> the person who did this, or, you yeah, know what I yeah. mean? Like, I would be worried about that. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good point, but, like, yeah. But instead, can't, she got can't a certificate. Can't live your life that way if you're a white witch. Can't live yeah. your life that way. Oh, I mean, I, I <laughs> wish I knew random details like that. Like John Benet Ramsey. Yeah, I know exactly what happened. Like I'm trying to tell people. Yeah, her brother killed her. <laughs> <laughs> or the dad, or whatever. no, it was her brother. You think so? Hundred percent. Oh yeah. Did you, your mom tell you? <laughs> no, no. It's like you can. Uh, the the brother is fucking insane. I don't mm. know. I used to date a chick who was completely into it. So I oh really? I don't a know lot. a ton of. I mean, I know. I watch the a basics. ton of watch a ton of footage and like the brother, her slightly older, younger. Her he wasn't younger. He was older than her when he was still mm-hmm. a little kid. How old is he? Do you know? Now or no? Then? How old was he then? I don't know. He's like a year or two older than. Him. So what, like nine? He's big enough ten? to stove her fucking head in. That's basically yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was basically jealous of her uh-huh. and like there's like a Dr. Phil episode where he's talking to the kid and like, he's basically saying oh my god I think I've yeah, seen I that I was really jealous of her and I hated her sometimes and shit like that and, like, yeah and it was just like and the kid is just like smiling the whole time talking about his dead sister the kid is fucking yeah it's weird fucking psychotic now that you say that I'm pretty sure I've actually seen that or I've heard about it yeah but yeah. um yeah that's wild yeah, so that's that would be why the, the parents covered it up. It's like, uh-huh. oh my god, what have you done, Billy? You killed your sister. So yeah, that's what that's what's going on. God, can you imagine? I could not imagine having to deal yeah. with that. Yeah, no, and then just continuing to live with your <laughs> with your monster child. Oh my god, after yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, and raise him like he's normal and yeah. Uh. What a good boy. Yes, madam. I mean, he's fucking creepy <laughs> yeah. as fuck. Yeah. He's creepy as shit. I don't know if yeah. you've ever seen... Yeah. Anybody out there, yeah, look up anything about her brother. Yeah, he's a fucking total psychopath. Really? Even as a little kid. Yeah. So, I have to ask, um, you said that you, you're open to the idea of ghosts. Yes. Um, but you're still very skeptical. Skeptical is not the right word, I okay. guess. Uh, I, I, it's like I want to believe that they <laughs> Very exist. Very uh-huh. I just don't. I haven't. I've had one semi-paranormal experience where I thought I encountered a ghost, but it was also just nightmares. So okay, I don't know. was it like night terror? Uh, at one point, it was yes. Wait, what happened? Uh, okay, so I used to have this job where I traveled and uh uh i was staying in a motel Mm -hmm. and and it was uh and uh whatever short story i started (laughs) i was in a motel and i kept having these fucked up nightmares like i you know i'm asleep in bed and it's restless fitful sleep Mm -hmm. and like at one point i got up and you know how those uh, motel rooms have like a cheesy little desk with a mirror and a chair. Yeah, yeah. And like I leaned on the chair and I was looking at myself in the mirror, and then like I was when looking, you woke up, I was 
dreaming. Oh, you were still dreaming. Okay. I was still dreaming, but it was like I had woken up. Uh huh. So I was leaning on the back of the chair, staring at myself in the mirror really hard, like, uh -huh. what the fuck is going on? Uh huh. And I didn't believe that it was me. And then I jumped, but my reflection didn't move. Oh, and fuck. I, yeah. And then I gasped awake, like, Bleh! And then you got out of bed. Oh, yeah. I see. So it was oh, like, that's the worst when you yeah. have a dream. That it, you think you woke up, but yeah. you're still dreaming? Yeah, yeah. I was having those, and I never have those. I'm not like a nightmare guy. Yeah. Most of my nightmares are me like fighting aliens with laser guns. That's really? Like, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I have those dreams all the time. That really? Being invaded by aliens. I'm so jealous. And there's like a giant mothership in the sky, and I'm <laughs> running around. Actually, most of my dream is me trying to find ammo. I have a gun, uh -huh. but like I need ammo. Oh, you need I have those dreams like all the time. If so I'm I running around seeing weird shit, but the whole thing is like, we gotta fucking. Sign I am off so jealous stuff. of people that have like interesting dreams like that. Because yeah. my dreams, if I remember them, yeah. are typically just like, yeah, I was at work. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like nothing exciting. Yeah, I've but had if those I, dreams. I, I know I've had friends that have, uh, like, were like that. Were like, I dreamt I was at school. Yeah. And so like, I feel like I'm like an extra day of school now. Like I'm a six day <laughs> fucking school week. It was like, Seriously. Yeah. You have like a stressful day at work. You're like yeah. slammed and then you wake up and have to go to real work. You're like, this sucks. <laughs> no, but I have then crazy dreams. If I do have nightmares, yeah. they're very subtle. Yeah. And I think that scares me more than anything is like suspense, you know, yeah. like in a horror movie. Yeah. I'm more scared of the suspense than like the jumps really. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, so yeah. I'll have dreams where I always have this, if I have a nightmare, I'll try to scream, but yeah. nothing comes out. It's like a whisper sound that comes out of my yeah. mouth. Yeah, yeah. But um, I did have one dream I remember. This was like years ago, but I thought of it when you were talking about um, like you thought you woke up, but you were still having a dream. Yeah, yeah. I had this one nightmare one time in this old apartment I used to live at with my roommate. Mm -hmm. And I had kept having it happen over and over again, which was yeah. really weird. But I kept waking up, quote unquote, yeah. walking out of my room, yeah. going into the living room, yeah. and, I, and I went to talk to, my roommate was named Emily at that time. Yeah. So She's still named Emily, <laughs> but she was my roommate at the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she was sitting on the couch with her head turned towards me, yeah. and I, or turned back yeah. around, like the back of back her, her head, head, right? Yeah. yeah, she's sitting on the couch, and I walk behind her, and I'm just like, hey Emily, will you turn off the TV? or you turn down the TV or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And she just wasn't responding yeah. and her head's just not moving. And yeah. I was like, Emily, will you turn off the TV? Yeah. And it was like, I just kept getting more and more fearful. Cause yeah, it was yeah. like, why are you not turning to look at me? Are you sure you weren't astral projecting? Oh, now I don't know. <laughs> but it kept happening over and over yeah. again. And then I'd like wake up in yeah. bed and be like, what? And it was like one of those things that you try to, this, you're like, I saw my roommate on the couch. And they're like, that's yeah. not scary. But it's the <laughs> feeling of just yeah. like, why aren't you turning around? I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now that you say that, yeah. I don't know. That's the only time that's ever happened to me. Yeah. And it happened multiple times. Or um, I'll get in streaks of nightmares uh -huh. where I'll have like nightmares for like a few nights in a row. Yeah. And that's the weirdest. It's like you get caught on a record or you keep, or do you have those, something. Yeah. maybe, or those yeah. dreams. Do you ever get those dreams where they're like a rerun? Like you kind of have that same dream again? Ah, uh, no, not really. No? no. I mean, I said I've had the alien invasion dream a few times, but that's like, mm -hmm. uh, it's always different. It's always mm -hmm. something. And it's not always aliens. It could just be like an army invading or something like that. But uh -huh. like, I just haven't, yeah. But like I said, most of those dreams I'm running around looking for ammo for some yeah. weapon or a weapon or something. Most of it is like the stuff that happens before the fight is where I'm like stuck in the dream yeah. as I'm dreaming. And yeah. I'm coming across weird like dioramas and, and strange like, you know, dinner settings and shit like that. All yeah. under the pretense of like we're getting ready to go to war kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, astral projecting. If you, uh, I've really, I've... Ch I started to get interested in that and then the interest faded but like it uh -huh. is something I'm really interested in uh, I, I can't remember like as you're falling asleep you're supposed to like say some kind of chant and think of your hands or something like that and also hands. I've heard that like um, yeah because there's like a, you're supposed to at one point like try to like raise your hand as you're falling asleep but like not raise your hand oh, kind okay. of thing uh -huh. like your, men, your mind's eye hand or something like that okay. and also I've heard uh, that like you take like alpha brain or something like that right before bed it's supposed to help alpha with brain. astro projection and lucid dreaming I've heard so like with lucid dreaming uh, yeah, I've uh, heard what's nootropic, alpha brain uh, nootropics 
like brain drugs, smart drugs. Smart drugs. Oh yeah, yeah you work at New Seasons. Uh, no, no, I was into this way before. I don't think New Seasons has any of those. Oh really? You can get them at uh, float shops though, if you. Oh. Yeah. I've been floating one time. It was like the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. No, yeah. that's not true. Yeah. But it was really fun. That's where I buy my alpha brain from. Is from the float. Does shop. it work? Do you do? You yeah. I call it my job interview. Lucid dream. No, I don't oh. use it for bed. Uh, oh. you use <laughs> I, it to like to think. To think. It makes you okay, like okay. Uh, really decisive. It's not speed though. No. Uh, okay. Because you can take it right before bed, and uh-huh. you will fall asleep. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. But it just makes you. It like uh, makes you uh, have more access to more like I don't know information in your brain, memories to call. Huh. I take them before. I'll take two before like a job interview. Yeah. I'll tell you, here's a freaky story. Okay. Uh, one time I was uh, having sex with somebody mm-hmm. and uh, right post coitus, like right after <laughs> there was this giant fucking like flash right above the bed, a fucking static electricity, this like it was like something right out of Poltergeist. Yeah, that's what I was and thinking like, too, actually. We were like, holy shit, did you see that? I did see that. And it was just like, what the fuck? And we just kind of ignored it. Then it happened again. And I realized what it was is I had put my my little TV, my old timey tube television uh, upstairs on sleep mode. And as it's doing its thing, and usually the everything had stopped already. When my when it hit sleep mode to actually uh-huh. turn itself off, sometimes this weird static thing would be like, and like shoot out into the bedroom. Yeah. Wait, so the TV was behind you? TV was like to the side of the The bed. But like like the reflection of the TV? I don't know what it was, but like it happened twice and I figured out what it was. Yeah. It was the TV turning itself off. So so just imagine like a cathode ray television Uh that's probably about this big. Yeah, yeah. Up on on top of like a shelf kind of thing. And doing that thing where you see the light in the middle of it and the line like it's turning off. Yeah, but in the pitch darkness of the room... Because oh. I have like foil on my windows uh-huh. to keep all the light out. Uh-huh. In the pitch darkness of the room, whatever, it looked like fucking like a big static fucking fist. Well, you have foil on your windows. Yeah. So maybe it was reflecting off the foil? Could have been all, uh, all yeah. the above. But it yeah. definitely was like if you were lying in bed when my TV sleep mode kicked on and the TV turned itself off, uh-huh. it was like in pitch black room, like it seemed like it was like right above the bed yeah it happened like twice it reminds me of that yeah. hand coming out of the TV yeah. and pulled you guys yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's awesome yeah the thing is too that like the worst is when something like that happens and then you find an explanation for it yeah. but it doesn't fully satisfy like how time, intense it, it was yeah yeah because the first time it was like are we going to are we going to talk about what we just saw mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like yeah. did you like see it's that? happening this is did the alien attack did that come through the window or Ever- something what where was is that? my ammo yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I did have a, a yeah, in the motel room. Mm-hmm, I yeah. Did, the, the I did have a more intense, uh, like uh, 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 what do you call it when you're, you have pressure sleep paralysis. That yeah, same yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had sleep paralysis after you saw yourself in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a couple other things I can't remember. I did write it down, but like I have seen it in a million years. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was on my stomach. And I, it felt like I felt like uh, like a black presence with arms and reached out and like started choking me. And I was like on my stomach, and I was just like, Ugh! and like I felt yeah. all the blood like rush to my head. Uh-huh. I think at the time you I, felt that it was black. I, could, I my eyes wouldn't open, but I could like see like a black presence in like, like black a shadow arms. Yeah, figure. Yeah, like a shadow mm-hmm. yeah. reaching out to choke me. As if the bed wasn't there. I'm laying on my stomach, mm-hmm. and there's somebody in front of me, like, as if I was sitting oh, up. Oh, underneath you. I get yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm on my stomach, uh-huh. and then suddenly, I can't open my eyes, but then it's like, I'm just like, I'm like sitting up like this, and uh-huh. there's somebody standing in front of me, choking me, and all the blood is rushing to my face. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, like, as if, I, I think at the time, I compared it to bungee jumping, if you've ever bungee jumped. No. Like, all the blood, like, runs to your head. It felt like that. And and uh, uh, I my reaction was to get really pissed and be like, "What the fuck is your fucking problem, man?" Yeah. All, all in my brain, I can't yeah. I can't open my eyes yeah. or move or anything. I'm completely yeah. paralyzed. And then I 
tried to move my arms, but I couldn't. And so I just, I used dream arms to reach out and choke him back. Really? And be like, like, fuck you, you fucking, what the, who, who the fuck molested you? Why are you fucking yeah. fucked up, motherfucker? Fuck yeah, you. Yeah. And like, uh, and then it like, it broke and I was like, oh, and like Whoa. jumped up. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, I will say uh, that before that, uh, like the day before, I had done a shit ton of E, a lot okay. of ecstasy. Yeah. So like, I remember as I was writing down what happened to me, I was like, or maybe I just have a lot of holes in my brain well, right now from okay. all the drugs I did. Well, that's the, okay, because you never know what ecstasy is like cut with. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, okay, it's so usually if you do a bunch of ecstasy, you've depleted the serotonin levels yeah. in your brain. Yeah. So if you were bummed out the next day, <laughs> yeah, probably the E. Yeah, yeah. But having a spirit suffocate you, <laughs> it's not like, well, did you do ecstasy the day before? I don't know, man. <laughs> like, oh, no, never mind, it's the ecstasy. No, yeah, that's not the... what happens. So, uh, you know, I mean, just like theoretically. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just... Um, that's wild. I've actually heard lots of stories like that with the sleep paralysis. Yeah. And the thing is, is, like, there's an explanation for it. Yeah. But most people who experience it, they're just like, it was real. Like, I can't. And yeah, that's yeah. the thing. That's the question, though, is like, well, people is it real? Opening their eyes and seeing people in the room and shit like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I used yeah. to date a guy who would get sleep paralysis and yeah. he would see yeah. Yeah, people in the room and yeah. stuff. But where I wonder is like, okay, it's either it's real, like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. kind of the easy explanation. Yeah. It's a spirit. Oh, that's the easy one? Is that that's it's real? The, well, that's, well, that's, I mean, because if it's real, then it's not. The other side of it, though, is like, whether it's real or not, you experience it oh, in yeah. your brain. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, is what do you not experience in your brain? Yeah. The fact that you're sitting here right now, seeing me, talking to me, experiencing yeah. this, how real is this? Yeah, that's, the only reason you experience it is your brain is projecting it. That's my like philosophy with like acid and shit as well. It's like one time I took uh, too much acid, okay. and I thought that I was uh, a conduit to the hive mind of all of humanity on the planet, okay. and I was talking to people in my out loud, and I would hear voices. It's a long story through the police <laughs> radio. <laughs> talking back at me. I was in the back of a police car. Na oh. Naked. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. And they were talking to me in like Bangladeshi or whatever, you know, like foreign languages. And I was talking back to them, understanding what they were saying. Uh -huh. And I was plugged into every brain on the planet. Uh-huh. Ripped on acid. Yeah. And like, I step away from that going like, okay, like 99.9% .9 of my brain knows that that wasn't real, but mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to be plugged into every brain on the planet because that right. was happening to me and I was hearing people and talking to people and mm -hmm. I knew what that, I know what that feels like. Yeah. I have that memory. That memory is real. Mm -hmm. The thing that yeah. happened, not real. The memory well, of it is real. The, and then the, uh, and then the other thing that's crazy about memories in general of even yeah. like no drugs, nothing. Yeah is that they are not reliable because your memories are created oh. as well. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, you'll talk to someone, there's an episode of Seinfeld actually that yeah. I always think about where he talks about like, remember you were reading that one book and she yeah. goes, no, no, it was this book. And he's yeah. like, remember you were drinking, you, you, you always used to chew winter green gum. Oh, she was yeah, like, yeah. no, it's black licorice. Yeah, yeah. And they'd go back and forth. You were wearing yeah. a yellow dress. No, I was wearing a red dress. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that's how feeble our minds are yeah, of yeah. just like regular occurrences. Yeah. And there's times where like I'll be talking to like my siblings or something about like, yeah. oh, remember this? And they're like, no, no, it was this. <laughs> and yeah. then you'll be so sure that yeah. you even have a photographic memory of this yeah. is where we were, this is what happened. Yeah. And then someone else and then will be they like, pull up a real photo no. and go, see, you're on. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, what? <laughs> and that whole like the Bernstein Bears thing and like yeah. the, the Mandela effect, all of that, it's yeah. just it fascinates the shit out of me yeah. that all of reality is constructed in your mind. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So as much as like, you know, we'll sit here and talk about, well, I don't know if I believe in ghosts or I, maybe I do believe in ghosts yeah. or maybe this happens, maybe that happens. The fact is, is that people experience things. Yeah. And for them, it's just as real yeah. as just sitting here on a bench 
talking. Yeah. Totally real. Yeah. Or like people who are schizophrenic and they talk yeah. about horrible, scary stuff that they see all the time. Oh, yeah. How do we know that that's not actually there and they have access to it and we don't? Yeah. We don't know. Yeah, We don't exactly. know anything. Yeah. You know? Wavelengths, man. Mm-hmm. Or <laughs> like getting into the idea of like the matrix and it's like we're all just <laughs> plugged in. We're all into this. Yeah. I love thinking about stuff like that because I don't know. It's, it's fascinating to me. Yeah. You know? I don't know. <laughs> that stuff interests me. Yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Like reality is all that you can perceive. It is absolutely true that reality is simply all that you perceive. Such an interesting perspective for us to take away this week. I hope you had so much fun hanging out at Old Town Pizza and discussing the strange and paranormal with James and I. Be sure to check out James Barella's weekly comedy showcase, Sincerity is Gross, every weekend at the Slide Inn in Portland, Oregon. If you're not in Portland, check him out on Instagram with the handle at jbarellacatmetal. That's at J-B-A-R-E-L-A-C-A-T-M-E-T-A-L. I love his handle because it combines things that I absolutely love. James Barella, cats, and metal. While you're at it, check us out on social media too. You can find us with the handle at Lit Dark Podcast. That's at L-I-T-D-A-R-K Podcast. Check out our website, LitDarkPodcast.com, where we have merchandise available now. If you love this show, be sure to rate and subscribe. It means so much to us. Special thanks for this episode goes to Sarah Schneider, my manager, Jonathan Cooper, my graphic designer, Randall Lawrence, my producer, Nick Wilson at Bridge City Media and Design, Dan Stutzman for being you and all you do, James Barella, my guest, and as always, a very special thanks to all of you for listening. River City Podcast Federation.